my name is Brooks Duncan. I'm from here from Vancouver. Uh, I run a website called documentsnap.com, which is about going paperless, helping people turn their piles of paper into an organized electronic system. Paper is the de facto record keeping system. So I asked Brooks, what are some of the dangers of a paper based system? Um, well, it's very hard to search. Uh, even though you know, we all think we know where something is, there's always going to be things that fall through the cracks. Um, you can't search based on a word or anything like that. You have to paw through the piles or your file folders to find it. Um, if something gets misfiled in the wrong place or you forget where you filed it, it's going to be very difficult to find again. Um, and it's just slower than, uh, than the alternative. Another danger that Brooks mentioned later on in the interview was the destruction of your single paper-based copy, whether it's by fire, flood, theft, or any other biblical disaster. The first thing is it makes it really fast to find information. If you do everything kind of properly, and we'll talk about that in a bit, uh, you could have it so that, let's say you wanted to find a Walmart bill. You could just type in the word Walmart and it would bring up the receipt and the MasterCard bill that you used to pay for it and maybe the warranty of the thing that you're looking for. You can bring that up in one click. So it's very fast to find and store information. Um, the second reason is it reduces clutter. Um, you know, your productivity will increase if you're not having to go look through piles of paper everywhere to find things. And Sometimes people, they don't, not even consciously, but they find when their desk and work area is a mess, it just causes a level of stress. And they don't really know how much better it can be until they actually eliminate that clutter. So that's a big one. Um, the third that I don't talk about too much, but is important to a lot of people is the environment. Um, you know, the less that we're printing stuff out and the less paper information we're getting, uh, the less trees we need to cut down. So, Whether you're going paperless or not, organization is a key thing. And that question, where do I put this? That's where Brooks starts off. Uh, so the first thing I recommend for sure is to take some time to think about your workflow, how you want it to all work before you even get into scanners and software. Um, think about how is the paper coming into my life now? Uh, what do I do with it? Where do I, where's my recycling? Um, where do I put the paper before I'm going to process it? Um, after I process it, what do I do with the paper? And all that stuff. Because that will make your, the rest of it go a lot smoother if you already have the kind of workflow steps nailed down. Then you want to look at what paper can I eliminate right off the bat? So your bank and your vendors and your utilities, a lot of times they will have paperless billing option. Here in Canada, we have something called ePost, which you can sign up for and a lot of your bills and statements can come online. And um, a lot of times we receive catalogs that, or phone books that we just, they come in our mailbox and we throw them right into recycling. Um, so just take a, a little while and uh, just unsubscribe from as many of those as you can. And there's services out there that you can go to and they'll uh, send the requests on your behalf for you. So that's eliminating the paper that you have now. Once you do that, you want to look at having a decent scanner. Um, most of us have an all-in-one printer scanner combo and with a flatbed scanner. Uh, those will work, but you'll find if you're doing having a large catch-up project or you have a lot of uh, paper on an ongoing basis, you're going to find it very frustrating because um, they're slow. Usually the software isn't very good. And if it's only one sided, you have to sit there and flip pages. And uh, it's, it's usually not a great experience. You can do it, but I don't recommend it. I recommended investing a bit of money in an actual document scanner. 
um, that has some of the features you want to look for is an what's called an automated document feeder and that lets you just put a stack of paper in your scanner and hit go. Uh, you don't have to sit there entering pages one by one. And then also I recommend a feature called duplex and all that means is it scans both sides of the paper at the same time which makes it a lot faster. Uh, so whatever scanner you comes with uh, will come with some software usually. Um, and usually the software that comes with scanners is not too bad. Uh, so you want to look at what kind of software you might want. Um, some people prefer not to use any software at all actually. And what they do is they set up file folders on their computer the same way that they might have file folders in their file cabinet and they just uh, manually f file things that way. Um, a lot of people really like going that way. Um, usually it's the more technical minded people and uh, that's a great option. Uh, the nice thing about it is you don't need to buy any extra software and usually with our uh, you know Mac, the latest Mac operating systems and Windows 7 it will let you search your documents uh, has built-in search so you can get away with just having file folders in your operating system. Some people prefer to have a bit more fully featured document management system that maybe has some you know document manip manip manipulation uh, capabilities, um, allows you to preview stuff and and allows some more filing and maybe tagging so you can go and buy uh, these document management systems. Most of them are pretty good. Um, the next thing you want to do, and usually this is included in your scanning uh, package, is you want to make sure this, the PDFs are made searchable. Um, so the term for this is optical character recognition or OCR. So what you want to do is make sure you check that box in your scanner software that says make this PDF searchable. And that way later on when you want to find your documents, you can just type in a few keywords and it will search the contents of your PDF and bring it up on the screen right away. Brooks and I talked a bit about OCR not being 100% and this is what he had to say. What I usually recommend is that people don't um, only rely on OCR because exactly what you said, uh, it's never 100%. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you name your files well. So in that example I just gave, or we just gave a Walmart receipt, let's say you bought a, um, a scanner at Walmart for example. So what I would probably recommend is naming the file with a, a date, you know, 2011 walmart scannerpdf And that way, even if the OCR doesn't work, um, you can still find it by file name. So that's one thing that I, that I recommend. Um, so once you've done all that, you've got your, you've got your scanner, you've got your software, everything's searchable, everything's great. Um, the most important thing is to have a backup, um, preferably more than one backup. So at the very least, if you do nothing else, um, pick up a cheap external hard drive from Costco or whatever, plug it into your computer. Um, most mo modern operating systems have uh, backup software built in. Uh, if you have a Mac, it has what's called Time Machine, and Windows 7, I believe, has a built-in backup as well. And make sure that your documents are backed up to that. Um, if you want to take things to the next level, which I do recommend, is have some sort of off-site backup. So you can either, uh, you know, save things to a hard drive and give it to a friend, your hard drive, and just rotate it that way. Um, or you can use online backup. Uh, there's lots of online backup providers out there where it will upload your files securely to the internet. And that way, if something was to happen to your office, um, all your files are stored off-site and you can get them back. But whatever you do, make sure you have, at the very least, um, one backup. And those are the main uh, steps for going paperless. I asked Brooks to recommend his easy, go-to paperless system, and here it is. What I recommend uh, if someone just wants to get it to go easy is my recommended scanner is called the Fujitsu ScanSnap. Uh, you could, I could go into the reasons, but just go to Amazon and search it and you'll see the reviews and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, if you're on Windows, it comes with a program called ScanSnap Organizer. And honestly, that's really all you need. Um, and if you're on the Mac, it doesn't come with a document management system, 
So either you can scan straight to folders or you can uh, pick up a software package like Mariner Paperless or Yap are two examples of really good document management systems. And then you want to have a backup for sure. So at the very least, I recommend just using whatever backup is in, uh, included in your operating system. So Time Machine on the Mac, Windows 7 backup, or a really good one that I like is called Crash Plan. Um, so look into that as well. It will allow you to back up to different locations and online if you choose. Brooks has a great website with tons of free information at documentsnap.com. And another thing, if you're going to buy a scanner and it's going to be a Fujitsu and you're going to buy it online, I suggest doing it via his site. What will happen is, is it'll take you to Amazon, so you'll get the same price, but Brooks will get a small portion of that sale. And I mean, you might as well help a brother out uh, if you're going to buy it anyways. And trust me, he's not recommending Fujitsu ScanSnap just to get that little bit of uh, recommendation money from Amazon. It really is a good scanner. I have one myself right here, and it is just a great scanner. I hope that you found this helpful. If you have any comments, questions, or well wishes, please do leave a comment. It'd be greatly appreciated. Cheers. Look, Mom, I can scan. Woohoo! <laughs>